another round powered by Standic Bank. Yeah, those girls were quite uh, <laughs> Let me uh, tell you, interesting. Ophelia and Elizabeth bring up some very important points. Mm. What I like about them is the fact that they actually bring out some good issues. It's sexism, it's classism. This would not have happened anywhere else like this. Hey, but it happens, Gaetano. It, it, hey, boss, uh, my guy is here. Who? Uh, CEO. Uh, CEO uh, why? Let's hang with the CEO. Hello? But imagine, Patrick knows the CEO of Stanbic Bank. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I die. Hmm? My guy. Don't say you have never met a CEO. By the way, I'm also a CEO, but don't say you've never met a CEO. CEO <laughs> Patrick Guy. Patrick, how are you? How are you? Pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you for have joining us, boss. Cheers. Eh? Thanks What's for coming. CEO. Pleasure. How are things? Uh, things are good. What can I get you, sir? Uh, I guess you're all having Tusker Light. I'll join you. Ah, good man. <laughs> good man. Good man. Good man. Tusker Light, Fred, please. The good man drinks Tusker. Now, apparently, yeah. apparently, mm -hmm. the reason my brother brought you here, please remind me, is because you are an oil drinker. <laughs> oil <laughs> drinker. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. No, as in, you are pretty much heading up the oil sector. You, you're on the board of the oil... Uh, Chamber of Oil and Gas. Chamber of Oil and Gas. Yeah. And CEO of Stanbic Bank, yeah. which is pretty much the biggest bank in the country and a big player in the oil and sector. So this guy, first of all, does not know that we have oil in the country. No, no, I know we have oil, but my biggest... You said droplets. Okay, okay, droplets, that's mm. neither here nor there. But my biggest issue, yes, we have oil, but Patrick, Mm. I know for a fact that because of what oil does to economies, it's a fantastic thing. But it's also a curse. Mm. The oil curse. It's an oil curse. Look at places like the Niger Delta. Do those guys even see a drop of oil? The mm. oil will come, but we won't see it. I disagree with that, absolutely. Mm. Um, oil can be a curse. It depends on whether you have the right framework to monetize it mm. and have an impact on the economy. I think the fact that Uganda has taken its time in getting this oil out of the ground means that a lot of work, groundwork has been done. I know a lot of benchmarking has been done across the world. Mm -hmm. Learning from previous people's mistakes. Yes. Uh, look at Norway, for example. Norway is a fantastic case study on what to do right. I know Nigeria got some things wrong. But Uganda has taken its time in the sense that it's looked at best practices elsewhere. And if you look at our oil and gas framework and the regulatory setup, mm -hmm. the regulator, everything, mm. it's taken the benefit of m past mistakes. So I'm very positive that it's going to have a tremendous impact on the economy. You have to be positive because of where you sit. Mm. But there are a lot of negative factors as well. Mm. Or not only that, environment-wise. Mm -hmm. Nobody has mentioned the environment. I have not heard. Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong. What, what impact will you guys taking that oil out have on our environment? Do you know? No, it's a good yeah. point. It's a good point. And, and actually, because the oil is in the middle of a national park, it's Thank even you. more of a sensitive issue. Thank you. But all that's been taken into account. If you look at some of the oil plants, I am privy to some of the uh, processes they're going to be using. They are going to make sure that after they are done drilling a hole, they put it back in exactly the same condition it was before they left it. These are the best practices in the world. Mm. And it's all signed. It's all part of the... the, the uh, the agreement to the government. The biggest uh, thing I need you to help uh, get my brother clear is... Not only me, not only me. There are many people out over there saying... But I'm yeah, yeah, I'm starting, I'm starting with you. <laughs> uh, one at a time. Is the issue of how do Ugandans benefit from this oil? Mm. How is, is our fuel going to be cheaper? Because right now fuel has been going up mm. steadily mm -hmm. and nobody's talking about it. I know you don't pay for fuel. I know. <laughs> for a <laughs> fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See you <laughs> really. But those guys are paying easy. For, for and six. yet we have oil in the country and we're paying 4,000 shillings per liter. And it's been going up Come steadily. On. Steadily yes. from 3.5. Yes. No, no, because then I turned and it was 4K. I'm like, hold on, when did this happen? Mm. 40, 60, and nobody's talking about it. So the issue is how, how will we, when we, the oil, is finally out. As Ugandans, the ordinary Ugandan, benefit from that oil. Will will our fuel be cheaper? Is there a way in which me as Marcus I can make an extra buck from this oil? What 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 what's what's two, in it for the guy? Basically, two Okay, two 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 things. One, 
let's, before even the oil comes out of the ground, let's think about what's going to happen in the next three to five years. To monetize this oil, there's going to be about $15 billion invested. $15 billion. The GDP of Uganda is $30 billion. That's so, putting things in perspective for you. So 50% of, of the GDP is going to be invested in the refinery, the pipeline, and actually just getting the whole thing together so the oil can flow to Tanga. $15 mm. billion. So a lot of people obsess about when oil is coming out of the ground, but actually the more interesting bit is the process is, is the next three to five years to get the oil out of the ground. So out of that $15 billion, the question you should be asking, how much of it is going to be spent in this local ecosystem? Now it's true, there's a lot of specialized oil equipment, drilling mm -hmm. rigs that mm -hmm. Ugandans mm -hmm. don't make, but can we capture about 30% of that? In our estimates, that would be a fantastic scenario. If we can get $5 billion, right? To stay here. Spent in With local Uganda. Yeah. Including your company, um, mm -hmm. SMEs. So, so that's the connecting the dots. That's what we should be asking. So how do we take a piece of that 15 billion? Now, have it here. Exactly. Now, when the oil starts pumping, the estimates are the government coffers will receive about $2 billion annually. When is that oil going to be coming out? 2020, 2021. 2020, 2021. Give or take. Give or take. And 15% goes to government. No, no, no. The, I'm just saying the 15 billion will be spent before the oil comes out. So can we get 30% of that spent? Which is 5 billion. Which is about 5 locally. billion. Stay locally. Over the next three years. That will be a good outcome. Mm. Then once the oil starts pumping, the government of Uganda will receive about $2 billion annually in revenue. This is the government. But, remember, but, but, but remember, the government only collects about $5 billion in taxes and you, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. this is a windfall. Um, so government revenues will grow by almost 50%. So the question you should be asking, what will we do with that $2 billion? And Thank how you. is it going to change your lives? Thank you very much. Mm. Am I going to be that person who has the roads are done infrastructure wise? Are you going to make sure as government that uh, there's a, uh, there's, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Marcus? Infrastructure. I said that one already. Okay. One. Schools. Schools. Hospitals. Hospitals. All yeah. these things. Are those going to be key? Healthcare. Healthcare. It's going to be cheaper yeah. for me. Yeah. Again, that's what it is. That's yeah. the question that we ask. Those are the right questions to be asking um, to the government. This $2 billion, which fund is it going to sit? How is it going to be spent? Again, best practices are that $2 billion usually goes into a sovereign wealth fund. Mm -hmm. And that sovereign wealth fund invests in non-oil. Sectors. Related sectors, yes. So you're balancing out the fact that eventually when oil runs out or doesn't run out, that you're taking money from oil and investing in other sectors. That was the so, mistake Angola made, right? Angola, Nigeria. Same mistake sectors. of putting back in, mm. into, into the same sector. Exactly. So when you run out of oil, you're messed. Mm. So like Nigeria, 90% of the uh, revenues are from oil. Even 50 years after pumping oil, that shouldn't be the case. Mm. So will Uganda take part of that two billion and invest it in agriculture, which is mm. our competitive advantage? Mm. Mm. And that's, I think, those are the right questions we should be asking. But yeah, going, back, here's, here's going, another... going back to the five billion, and this is what I wanted him to say. Yeah. So the, the, the 15 billion spent pre-oil. We hope that 30% stays here. And this is where I want Patrick to be very clear for everybody else that five billion stays here. How, if somebody there is listening, my company, your company, in detail, what are the opportunities that are available? Okay, that's what I need to be clear for uh, for anyone like yourself. Absolutely. Like, so, so for somebody else there who is there, say, growing tomatoes. Yes. How do I benefit? Yeah, that's that's seems, what I need. You, that's what seems, I need you to. Yeah, and it seems, and correct me if I'm wrong, Marcus, Patrick. It seems to me that it is the elite who have the inside who get the first deals on all of these projects which are oil related, be it providing tomatoes, mm -hmm. a toothpick. Mm -hmm. As in, you know how tenders go out. The tender goes out, but you've already selected who you want. How do I? And, and, and there are questions on whether yeah. or not that is actually being given to Ugandans vis-a-vis uh, vis yeah. experts. Because okay. there may be a Chinese guy who will say, no, me, I'm cheaper, I can bring my canned tomatoes. No, 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 fair enough. First of all, two things. One is they bring first certain activities or services that are only for Ugandan companies, okay? Catering, hotel services, food, the basics. Laundry, Yeah, all those that. things cannot be imported. And they've ring-fenced that, it's in the regulation. The, the reality is, is that we're not prepared, we're not ready. And I don't know whether we should be blaming 
foreigners for, for our ourselves. own lack of planning and because even today if you were good to go out and tender for a camp and ask for a consistent supply of 200 chickens a day you would struggle to get someone to supply mm -hmm. so whose fault is that mm. so we can stand here and make all the noise we have but the, the truth is Ugandans have known about this oil opportunity for the last 10 years but very few have actually prepared for it. Again, and, I, and I, I'm sorry, I disagree with you. Mm. You're saying we're not prepared. Mm. Shouldn't government be coming out saying, listen, we need A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I don't think there's enough information being given out. You're telling me things here, but it's almost as if it's being... You, you're hearing it for the first time. Yeah, I shouldn't be hearing it for the first time. You should be saying, right, we want people to do this, 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 and this. All of you Ugandans, our fellow brothers and sisters, come and, come and listen to us. Take away what you want and give us this. You've got five years. And we will support you as an SME to get to that position. Shouldn't that be happening? And, and, and as a bank, that's what they doing. As a bank, that's what you should be doing. Yeah, but Guy, you're not being fair because we've had multiple occasions of sharing information. The oil companies, the international oil companies, Total, Talo, Sino, have had multiple engagements with the government, with the, with the private sector, yeah. saying this is what's happening. This is where we are. Please get prepared. This is what Ugandans, Petroleum Authority of Uganda has had engagements. The Ministry of Energy is adding it. We at Stanbic have on an average three to four conferences a year talking about the oil and gas opportunity. So there's no shortage of information, frankly. Mm -hmm. There's no shortage of information. If you want it, it's there. It's, it it's, exists. I think it's just lack of uh, interest yeah. per se. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine, like he's saying, there's billionaires is that daughter that is sitting here in Uganda, waiting to be spent. And like I said, the problem is the Chinese guy will come and say, how many chickens do you want? 300, even five I can make. But you tell the Ugandan that. A Chinese man will go and make the chickens. <laughs> Somewhere he'll make them. Well, he'll do it. In two days, boom. You well, know. he'll do it. Whatever yeah. it takes, he'll mm. do it. And I think that's our problem. Mm. And then you, and it's, when we're quick to blame, always quick to blame. Ah, again, you said like it's for the elitist, it's for mm. the what? Mm. 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 But there are, there are, there is a scare that, that the people who are I don't know if making the decisions or the companies that are pick, picking the people to supply are... Uh, but you guys, is it just me? Sorry, hold that foot. Is it me drinking very fast? Or you guys are drinking very slowly? Boss, ladies and gentlemen. Patrick has not had a sip of this cup no, here. Not, not yet. You are yeah, discussing yeah, him yeah. many things. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm getting scared. Because maybe, the, the, maybe the, I'm a drunk. They're going to use know. our lack of capability to not give us those tenders. That's what I'm being told, or the or the, no. or the perception of it. Yeah, but but first of all, let me also make uh, I guess clear that myth. Mm. The oil and gas business has massive standards, right? Because it is it is a chemical that you're taking out of the ground. Mm. The oil companies or whoever is going to extract this oil are mm. not going to lower their standards. Right? Mm. So Ugandans have to step up. We have to step up. So one of the things we're doing actually at the bank is to try and figure out how we can upskill and build capacity in SME so they can participate. Mm. But it's, they're not going to lower their standards to, so that you can play a role. Mm. You need to decide. If you want cotton bed sheets, it's cotton bed sheets. Yeah. We're not going to start exactly. using th three layer cotton because mm. Mm. So And that's a double-sided argument. You're saying our environment. So what are you going to do about your environment? It's not about them, it's all about you. What are you going to invest in to make sure that you meet those standards? Mm -hmm. So standards will not, you will not cut corners with standards? They will, not, I mean, they will not. They will not cut corners. And when they ask you for 200 chickens a day, they have to be a certain spec, whatever it is. Mm. So where is that quality control? And this is the fear that I have, is that most of SMEs in Uganda generally don't pay attention to that piece to the finer details but as a bank are you helping helping them uh... no we are we've launched mm. an incubator recently mm. um, where we've actually identified certain segments that we think are going to play a huge role in the oil and gas initially so we're doing we're helping fabricators and welders and catering companies mm. and we're putting them through a whole process of building blocks how do you respond to a tender so procurement how do you negotiate a contract so it's not one-sided mm. because remember an SME negotiating against a total or a talo already they begin you know they're disadvantaged yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're building capacity on legal governance books of accounts how do you keep financial accounts or financial records so that you can submit them as part of the tender the reality is Uganda is a very entrepreneurial country 
but 70% of SMEs in Uganda don't make it to their third birthday. Mm. So what we're trying to do is how do we extend that so they make it to five, seven yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So their shelf all, life is much longer. Exactly. Mm. But mm. sorry, so to cut you. Mm. The, the big elephant in the room. His Excellency has been very pro and he's been very sort of stringent and how things should be done or not done. You hear of graft. But now you hear of graft. Of course, if you don't know, I know you don't know. You know what graft means? <laughs> Marcus, do you know what graft is? Drink some beer. <laughs> do you know what graft yes. is? What is graft? <laughs> Corruption. You're hearing stories, and I, forgive me, maybe, um, but you're hearing stories of cutbacks and what, and, and, you know, and His Excellency has come out and said we're going to do A, B, C, D, but how much are guys chewing? Mm. Mm. Is and, chewing and, taking and, place? And will it change? And will it change? Cost oil. Yeah, because I know a lot of money has been squandered even leading up to this. There was the whole, this whole tax issue regarding tallow oil and all of, I can't, I don't know the details very well, mm. but you know what I'm talking about. This whole tax in terms of if you want to sell, but then there's a, uh, or, or pass on the responsibility to another company. Just capture gains. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. We're hearing all billions and billions, so much money has been spent and not, and, man, and the oil is not even coming out yet. Mm. That's a big problem. No, no, no. I, I, first of all, I uh, think, To me anyway. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think there are some really good controls in place. So what the spend happens, the way this oil thing works is that the oil majors spend money to get the oil out of the ground. Then they recover the cost based on a certain formula when the oil gets sold out. So the money being spent, that $15 billion I'm talking about, government's not gonna spend a single dollar. It's going to come out of future revenues of oil. It's, that's the way the model works. So and you get a percentage of sales of the oil. Exactly. No, no, so, so, so initially, recovery yeah, you're recovering. Recovery. So the 15 billion will be recovered within a certain percentage over the next 20, 25 years mm. that oil is. Uh, and I must also say that only about 50% of the acreage has been um, explored. Mm. So there is a potential, in theory, because we have six and a half billion barrels of oil, about two billion roughly is recoverable. Mm. But in theory, based on current success rates, they could recover another six and a half billion. Mm. So we could end up doubling our oil base. Mm. So, and they've started exploring again. They recently um, issued some new licenses. Lake Albert. The same area. Same, same area. area. Same area. Mm. So, you know, knock on wood, we can find more oil. Knock on wood. And if that happens, um, First of all, it lowers the tariff of um, moving the oil to Tanga because mm. we're just pumping that much more throughput through the pipeline. Right, uh, right now, it's going to cost us about $12 to get the oil from Hoima to Tanga mm. per barrel. Mm. But because we're assuming 200,000 barrels is going through. But if we were able to double that, in theory, mm. the we'll tariff should come down to $6 or mm. half. Mm. So mm. there's a lot of good things happening. Um, the refinery is going to be a modular refinery, so we're going to start with uh, 30,000 barrels. Mm. Um, and that was one of the questions one of you asked, them, how will that help with oil, um, mm. with fuel prices at the pump? Mm. Do you remember, you, you said $4,000 per Yes, 4000 You see? But 4, how much of that is tax and transportation from Mombasa? 70% of that. Mm. That cost is actually mm. moving oil from Mombasa, 1,400 kilometers to Kampala. If we had a refinery, which is what we're going to do, all of a sudden all the fuel we're consuming is coming from Hoima. I see. Which is 200 kilometers, so it lowers the cost of transportation. Okay. okay. So there's a lot of good Se things. 70% of that is tax and, and, and transportation. And transportation. Yeah. For real? Yeah. Jesus. How do these fuel companies make money then? I mean, they, you're operating on, on cents and nickels. No, no, they, yeah. they're, they're, the they're operating on margins. The margins are very volume. thin, very, yeah. very the thin volumes. in the yeah, oil. Volumes, numbers. Yes, volumes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, with me, I pump, I put like, you know, 200 every time I go to the fuel pump, I put 200,000. <laughs> you want us to clap for you? What do you want? Do we pause and then you say it again? <laughs> <laughs> and is it, is it in is it a Subaru, is it a two liter? So that's like fuel tank is dripping from the tank. Us guys are 4.7 liter, however. Hey, oh, sure. <laughs> Tell him how we roll. Uh, by the way, but cash. no, I appreciate that because honestly, me, I was just like, you know what? We'll never see this money. Lots of my buddies are saying, ah, you know, those are the things for 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 those people. For first family, for first family, and ETC, all of that. ETC. ETC. No, I'm not going to see no, a dime no, of that no. money. It's going to have a massive impact. In fact, we think oil and gas ultimately will be about thirty percent of the GDP mm. of this economy from zero. So it's going to okay, take, it's going take like zero this So it will go away from agriculture, which seems to be the main... No, agriculture is 25% of the economy. Yeah, mm. Uganda has become a service economy. Mm. So agriculture, even though it employs 
70% of the population. It's only about 20, 20, 30% yeah, of yeah. GDP. Mm. But we now have a new sector that's going to emerge to really compete almost with agriculture. Okay. And it will have a massive trickle-down effect on other sectors. That's what people don't recognize. It's not about the oil. All the two cement companies are now doubling capacity, Hima and Toro Cement. Um, all the manufacturers of steel products, doubling, doubling capacity. capacity. The consumer Workforce. goods company, doubling capacity. So there's a trickle Employment and, and even this is, you know, same <laughs> informal sector, all these kind of guys working it, it around. it all feeds on itself. Yeah. It all feeds on itself. Yeah. Interesting you say that because I've heard a lot of Ugandans, I've, I've, I know some Ugandans who are rushing back to school mm. to learn about oil. Mm -hmm. because they realize that is the future. They're going to get Sijui, uh, a degree in this or um, quantity surveying of oil or mm -hmm. what so that they can be best placed. And I do hope that when you're having all of these things, big, big companies coming in, a majority of them, this whole thing of, um, what do they call it in, in South Africa? Um, B -B B -E -E. B -E -E, where mm -hmm. you have a majority of the people in the company, whatnot, must be Uganda. Mm -hmm. And I hope that sticks. But I think that's also misguided. Why? Let me, let me explain. Um, oil companies generally don't employ that many people because everything is outsourced. And I think studying an oil and gas degree is well and good, but the reality is that's not where the opportunity is. The opportunity lies outside the oil and gas. So for example, out of that 15 billion I shared with you, six billion is going to go into transport and logistics. It's actually moving stuff. Mm. From Tanga and Hoima, it's importing within, stuff. Mm. Trucks. Even within Hoima, yeah, trucks. We're, we're going to need what, two thousand trucks or something like that. Mm. Almost mm. double the trucks we have already, just to move things around. So rather than study oil and gas, I would be studying logistics and trucking. Mm. How do how do I become a, a no? Know, imagine, a, a imagine, imagine imagine this waste management. How many people will be on the pipeline? About ten thousand. The yeah, well, yeah, initially. Yeah, yeah. yeah 10,000. Kigamba Pupu. Yes. Who is going to manage their Pupu? Somebody has to do it. And that's an opportunity. Nasty as it may be, but it's that's there. Right. Yeah. Maybe. You know what I mean? Everybody will be drinking bottles of water. You throw them around. Who's going to collect that bottle of water? Somebody got to do that. They have to eat. Same thing. Okay. So you don't need an oil and gas. You don't need an oil and gas certificate for that. I see. I see. I hope you are much more informed. I'm very informed. Go and plant your tomatoes. But now again, when you go and plant for my tomatoes, Ugandans out over there, the opportunities are huge for you when it comes to the oil and gas sector. You've heard it from the man himself, CEO, who's going to pay for our bill. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> Make sure you keep it right here on Another Round every single Wednesday at 10.30 p.m. Use the hashtag AnotherRoundUG. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter is where you'll find us. Jo join the conversation, continue it. And uh, until next Wednesday, let's remember always to... Do it responsibly. Cheers, Patrick. Uh, so you're paying for this with your Stambik bank card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Card? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm happy to do so that. How many take, have you had? I've yeah. had. I can take my money back for yeah, yeah. from Marcus. Yeah, you yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Patrick. Cheers, Patrick. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>